Story time. The year is 2005. I'm working at a car dealership in Delray Beach, Lincoln Ford Mercury. I was in the uh, Subaru division. <clears throat> they had a Subaru lot there. It's around August 25th, right? Uh, between August 24th and 25th, somewhere around there. All right, yeah. <clears throat> Hurricane Katrina makes landfall uh, in Florida. At that time, I was staying at my aunt's house in uh, West Palm Beach. Uh, shout out to Anne-Marie, Tracy, <clears throat> and uh, I appreciate uh, you guys having me stay there. Uh, Vince was also there at the time. Uh, good friend. <clears throat> um, so... The hurricane hits, damage is done. This this is before it goes to New Orleans. So the hurricane hits Florida first on the way to New Orleans. Everybody remembers New Orleans because it broke the levee, water flooded, so that came after. But on the way to New Orleans, it passed through Florida. I happened to be in Florida at the time of the hurricane. Uh, went inside, the breeze passed, I slept through the whole hurricane. I could hear everything beating on the galvanized because we had to bar up the windows. Hurricane passes. I get woken up by my good friend Vince and he says, hey, Mahesh, uh, <clears throat> hurricane has stopped. Uh, let's go outside and assess the damage. I go outside with him. We walk around. We see all the debris. We start cleaning up. Uh, basically, <clears throat> I start noticing something. The entire neighborhood comes outside of their homes. People start going up to everybody, each other, and asking them, how are they? How do they feel? Is everything all right? Do you guys need anything? Some people went to get fuel. Some people went to get a generator. Other people went to get uh, ice and coolers. Uh, people started coming together. People were bringing food over if you didn't have anything. People started sharing what they had. And this went on for about a week until power was restored. <clears throat> I still went to work, still did what I had to do at work came back home in the evening and years later when I think back on that situation I remember thinking isn't it interesting that whenever there's a catastrophe or some destructive force of nature or impending doom we humans find it in our heart to come together and work as a team okay that has been so that was an example a real-life example of me witnessing the human compassion, human cooperation. So thank you, Hurricane Katrina, because you showed me the best humanity had to offer. And that was the first insight I got into us as a species and what we're capable of and what we can do for each other. So whenever I hear stories of eminent doom or earth coming to an end or chaos because we need order restored, our governments have to restore order, we need the elites to restore order. I think bullshit because I went through the most magnificent chaotic experience of a hurricane and saw that we had the capacity to govern ourselves and take care of each other as, as a species, as a commune, as a civilization. So don't ever let anyone tell you that we need people at the top to do things for us. No, they're not there to do anything for us. They're there simply as a service of management. That's it. The real work comes with you and me. Whenever catastrophe hits, are we there for each other? And that's the, the bottom line of this whole story. So shout out again to the family in uh, West Palm Beach, uh, <clears throat> Auntie Anne-Marie, my cousin Tracy, the whole family. Um, and rest in peace, Vince. He was a great, great guy. And uh, he was also a part of my life at that time. My Uncle Pedro, who also passed on, was a part of my life at that time. Um, all the kids who were there. Uh, all right. Just wanted to share that story and give you some food for thought. Take care.